Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Public Law with Bo and Tammy right here on TammyPepperman.org as heard on No Borders Radio as well. NoBordersRadio.co.uk We are only listener-supported, reader-supported, and thanks to the generosity of Tamworth Web Development dot co dot uk you're able to hear us um, Tammy Pepperman dot org is sponsored by and maintained by Tamworth Web Development and um, if you'd like to donate to keep us here uh, you can click on our donate button right on Tammy Pepperman dot org or help out Tamworth Web Development by purchasing one of their products um, you can go there uh, by going to tamworthwebdevelopment.co.uk and you can f- also find that you know the links are in the pull down on our um, videos as well as within the videos and everything else. Do I have you, Paul? Hey, Tammy. Yeah, and that tammypeppermint.org is looking really good too. Ah, thanks. That's thanks to Bill Ben too. Um, you know, I had some issues and that's. I'm I'm just thankful for Ben. Um, he's done a lot, and uh, yeah, no kid. Again, a shout out to Tamworth Web Development. Uh, co. uk for everything, and uh, I am extremely thankful. There there are no words to describe. So, how was your week? Ooh, kind of cold, boy. That global warming in the middle of July is sure freezing my butt off. <laughs> it's probably see what happened here is uh, Al Gore. He's been bottling sunlight. You know, you know how it goes. He also invented the internet and all those things, and I'm pretty sure that he's stockpiling all that sunlight as he's. Uh, he doesn't conserve anything, according to every research I've ever come across on Al Gore. He's got a, a, a carbon footprint that, that is three times greater than the average citizen. So something's going on back then, huh? Yeah, well, I mean that global warming, save the polar bear stuff, that nonsense that they make up. That only applies to. The uh, plebeians, not them, the oligarchs, of course, because they have to have their three-course steak dinners and, you know, all that. Turn the air conditioning on when you don't need it and all that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, you know, don't talk about uh, all of the fuel that's uh, going up in smoke for these wars and stuff. Or, you know, that it takes about... Uh, what about uh, five gallons to go a mile in an Abraham tank? Oh Abraham tank. Um, those helicopters. My goodness. See the helicopter crashed in South uh, Korea today. And footage of that is a wild footage of it going down in the middle of the street. I guess five crew were killed. Uh, no one on the street was killed though. You think they're cutting overhead? Well, it's easy to do in a helicopter. You don't got to do much to bugger them up, you know. I mean, I don't think they were really, um, you know, brought forth by uh, the engineers other than a joke. And then, uh, you know, military industrial complex said, oh, yeah, we got to have them. Yeah, they look good. Yeah, you know, I mean, you can land in places you can't get to with planes and such, but... I mean, I mean, there's only there's only uh, an on and off switch for those for those propellers. You know what I mean? <laughs> and if something happens, engine goes down, they go off. You know, uh, you don't you can't float to uh, can't glide the craft in, as we saw in South Korea today. No, well, maybe that's the purpose. You know, you look at all of their uh, contrived mechanisms and you know, non-lethal uh, use of tasers, when tasers have a 80% kill rate in it, you know, you look at the, um, such as that, the engineering of a helicopter itself, and, and you know, is, is there a reason for that? 
it, it goes along with the rest of the depopulation schematic. Sure. Um, sadly, I mean, we're we're sitting here covering the uh, Ukraine. Malaysian Airlines crash over the Ukraine, of course, the Ukraine, Ukraine Air is owned by none other by than Congress. Malaysian Air is no owned by none other than, uh, none other than Congress. And then today, I'm seeing this Associated Press report come out. That one says that the, according to those that are on the ground, the, the bodies are in advanced stages of decomposition. So they were killed before they were uh, victims of a a uh, congressional missile attack. That's what it's looking like. Then over on the Telegraph, they're also promoting propaganda. Um, of course, you've got both sides playing each other back and forth, back and forth. And I've been watching that all day long, back and forth, back and forth. Russia's blaming whoever, the United States is blaming whoever. Kerry, he's actually on a propaganda promotion schematic. I mean, he's all over in the media right now. Again. And, um, you know, the, the United States development is uh, d listed as the Ukraine. It's traded as the Ukraine for the, for, um, you said. And as you know, Moscow is a corporation located in the Wash in the District of Columbia. And, um, you know, interestingly enough, so is the Netherlands, so is Holland. And um, specific, uh, I'd like to bring up um, two of the um, most interesting finds that I came across today, of course, is Holland is traded as Public Citizens Incorporated, as well as the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And that, of course, is listed as um, located at 441 G Street Northwest. And um, the uh, Netherlands Ministry of Agriculture, we're talking about environmentalism. It used to be known as agrarian law, agrarian economics. And uh, they're just cashing in. Uh, the majority of the victims of this Malaysian airline flight happen to be of ne Netherlands descent. Um, Royal Netherlands Embassy is also located in the District of Columbia, 2347 South S Street, sorry, Northwest. Um, zip code is 20008. And of course, the most profound was uh, the find of SNV Netherlands Development Organization. And <clears throat> when I had it, when I had and verified this, of course, they're listed. Uh, with the tax treaties with the United States, you can go to irs.gov business international dash business forward slash Netherlands tax treaty documents. And um, as well as their treaty agreements, uh, which are listed at avalon.law.yale.edu 20th century TR 22-01 ASP. But uh, no one else other than Congress is cashing in on the deaths of these human beings. If they died in the air, they died in the air. If they were murdered before that, they were murdered before that. But there's no other beneficiary other than the United States Incorporated. Yeah, all right. That's what we say time and time again and shown uh, time and time again how the Congress and lower minion attorneys as well, they cash in off of humanity's demise over and over again. It's the same thing. And uh, they get up there and speechify and make it sound nice. That's that's all. It sounds nice, but it's horrifying. No, and then Moscow is coming in now, or she's coming in now and telling the, the sheeple they're going to protect them, and they want everybody's fingerprints. They want to start collecting fingerprints. Moscow is a corporation traded... On Dun and Brad Street, located in the same district of Columbia as the Netherlands, Holland, Germany, Greece, um, all of these quote countries that are actually corporations with banking agreements uh, known as treaties with the United States Incorporated in the traffic of human beings. 
That's what it's all about. So in the in this in the midst of this uh, investment, watch well, just put now a story. Um, Putin's approval in Russia soars to record, and America's plunges to near zero. Right, and this is the same game they were playing years ago with uh, promoting the uh, Cold War. Uh, Reagan's numbers went up. Uh, Gorbachev's numbers went down. Uh, you know, now it's vice versa. They're all clergy for Congress. Obama is clergy for Congress just as much as Putin, Netanyahu, um, who else? Uh, the marshal there. Uh, uh, Kim Jong Un. Yeah. Kim Jong Un, my man. Shout out yeah. to Kim. Yeah. And uh, we need to uh, realize. He's the most course. misunderstood, uh, quote unquote, leader on the planet. But Absolutely. they're all misunderstood when you don't see how the uh, corporate structure is is actually working, and you're buying into the play presentation by. You know, CNN, RT, uh, CBS, NBC, all the rest of them. That was an interesting play today, too. Um, CNN was reporting that RT's lying and, and vice versa, but CNN evidences itself to be a propaganda machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had that uh, RT reporter that quit on the air with them and saying, yeah, I don't, I don't want to work for a propaganda news media anymore. <laughs> there she is on CNN. <laughs> and, it, and it's so funny. Whose ratings have dropped to an all-time low as well. Oh, yeah. And, and it's all Heigl. It's all the um, promotion of the problem, action, solution. They create the problem, create the reaction, action, and create the solution. And it always benefits Congress. It doesn't benefit anyone else other than the attorneys. And nope. psychiatrists, of course. Psychiatrists cash in, but definitely and not. quote unquote bankers, which are really just law firms. Right, but not as much as general counsel. I mean, on the general counsel's websites, it says specifically that everybody else, their minions, are there to ensure its security and um, its well being and promote the uh, general counsel's well being and interests. So, you know, who's actually benefiting? And that. That's always been the perpetual question, um, you know, as I'm watching things play out in Chicago and cops are blaming gangs for the deaths of single women with five children and, and um, even a legislator came out this last year and she said, what, what if cops are killing these kids? Well, the legislator was blaming law enforcement officers. But she was not putting the blame on Federal Bureau of Investigation agents, which have never been prisoners of war, but are evidence to be the military for Congress. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, well, it's not only evidence, it's all that's written in the uh, Geneva Convention. Absolutely. As well as, you know, the, the um, old reports. Of, um, uh, church committee reports and, and all of those things. You know, it was FBI that was guilty of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And, you know, the, the human mind cannot conceive of those things because they say, no, my government can't be doing that. It's written. It's written in book two of the church committee reports regarding what happened to Dr. Martin Luther King. And when the FBI could not vilify him, and could not take him out and didn't know what to do otherwise, they just assassinated him. Neutralized the, the problem and the uh, detriment to Congress. Oh, over at rents.com, I've seen a couple headlines um, related, you know, of course, they're butchering, butchering up pal Palestinians as they ramp up the. Uh, ground incursion, I guess. You know, it's just horrifying what's happening there. Kids are playing all of a sudden. They're blown up by missiles, you know, and and the media promotes that as a good thing. But, you know, there's a couple uh, headlines over rents, really, that kind of call attention to what's going on. Zionist CNN boots reporter who called Israeli butchers scum. And then uh, NBC polls reporter for Honest Gaza coverage. Right, and they're... they're they're doing the same polarization as always. Israel is a corporation located in Washington, D.C. 
Israel makes money when it kills Palestinians and when it kills those who live on a hill in Zion, which is a Zionist. Israel makes money when citizens die, when citizens fight, when citizens are in disagreement, at odds, in opposition, and that's the name of the game. Congress comes in and says, well, we don't like Muslims today. Congress comes back in through its media, through the Broadcasting Board of Governors, and says, we don't like Jews either. And then Congress comes in and says, well, we don't like gays, we don't like straights, we don't like whites, we don't like blacks, we don't like browns. This is Congress doing these things. This is Congress promoting through the RAND Corporation, which is the Department of Defense, education, otherwise known as pedagogy, attendance on boys. That is the removal of the firstborn son. It takes you out because it's teaching you to believe in these concepts. Yeah, that's one of the longest ongoing, um, you know, uh, experiments and controversy or whatever you want to call it. But, I mean, these people have grown up um, generation after generation now um, since uh, Israel was created by Congress and uh, or recreated, you know, in 1948. Um, and, uh, you know... <laughs> I mean, these people actually hate each other uh, because of their indoctrination, well, and they're they genetically almost identical. Right, and it says they do. That's something that I wanted to tap on today, because when we've done the research on this intelligence production, we're also, Back Channel, doing the same research on whether or not people hate each other, and humans are not hating each other. Congress has to present... To those that will listen, that we are in argument as Congress slaughters us. Congress is slaughtering us and telling us that we hate each other. I have not come across anybody that hates me in a very, very long time. And the last one that did was an agent. And of course, we've got more research out today about informants. That's something I wanted to really touch on tonight because, I mean, they, they're admitting now that informants have, you know, um, pedophilia hung over their head. That is criminal coercion, number one. Number two, when Congress and the FBI are threatening to charge somebody with pedophilia instead of charging them so that those people will work for them. Mm -hmm. They're just as bad as criminals as the pedophiles. They are festering these pedophiles and allowing them to be in proximity to humanity. The FBI needs to be in Gitmo as much as the pedophiles need to be in Gitmo. Or just simply removed. Drop them in that new hole that opened up in Syria. Yeah. Yeah, I doubt you're going <clears> to <throat> find any molders or scullies in real life in the FBI. No. No. It was all um, a presentation to tell you that they're the good guys. Of course, right. I'm referring to that uh, um, series, television series of last century, uh, The X-Files. Well, and I've been teaching I used to love that show. Um, I like that stuff now. before I knew all this stuff. And, um, you know, we have their intelligence schematic. We have the evidence that the FBI has been promoting through the Department of Justice, the intelligence that law enforcement are, you know, getting and being rendered with and being engineered with. And, you know, uh, we came across, what was it, the URSA Institute? That is the one that's programming law enforcement this week, and we've been teaching that since. And... It's very profound on the, um, not only the onslaught on the human mind, but also the onslaught on uh, various other subjects of humanity or other sects of humanity specific to law enforcement. Because for the longest time, I just thought that they were just part of the educational system. But they have their own special uh, intelligence that's being uh, promoted toward them and upon them through the intelligence community and um, it's not only through the URSA Institute it's also through this place called Polaris well there's this Jewish Iranian guy uh, Jew Jewish Iranian MP 
It says Israel is behaving like Nazi Germany. Yeah. That's what the Federal Bureau of Investigation is trained to do. Um, this week we were we came across that um, those stories. Oh my goodness! Uh, I'll apologize for the clicking before it starts, and I'll try to keep it to a minimum. Um, go ahead while I find this uh, these two stories. I wanted to read part of the one from the AP today because that was well. It's so just horrifying, fun. you know. It just goes on and on. Um, you know, Israeli officials not calling for cutting energy and food supplies to Gaza. Like, how long they've been, like, cutting off water and energy and all sorts of things, you know? I mean, I don't That's I don't know how they can stand those living conditions. As a matter of fact, they can't. They, they end up getting slaughtered. Right, and that's so One kid's, kid's, kid's baby brother died next to him in a missile attack earlier today. Um, I'm sick and tired of seeing all this stuff. Absolutely, and, and that's why Congress does it. If they didn't use this oppressive force of asymmetrical warfare, I know we talk a lot about fourth generation warfare, but asymmetrical warfare is just as it sounds. Somebody's got the upper hand because they have more financial clout, they have more media, they have more everything. Media is financial clout when it comes right. down to brass tacks. Right, and that is what Congress does. It, it promotes asymmetric warfare against all of humanity. And um, that's its function. That's its function to take over the globe. It is Caesar. It's also known as Satan. So the um, death toll, death toll in Gaza is over 300. So it's, you know, and it's, you know, that's just, you know, recently. Right. I mean, the, the uh, Israeli military uh, force and. Israeli police, uh, they kill uh, Palestinians um, weekly or even daily you hear about that stuff. I mean, they just, they've got such a disregard for human life that they've been indoctrinated with. And, you know, they're raising their children in this, you know, pasteurization of hatred and, uh, you know... Yeah, it's got to stop somewhere. It's got to stop. That's all got to stop. I'm well, they're American people. The, the quote citizen has to stand up against this corrupt, uh, murderous entity known as the United States of America. It is only actions of Congress. Congress is general general counsel. Congress is courts. Everything is is you know everything is wrong in their favor. And um, this. This article that was sent to me, it comes from dollarvigilante.com, and um, the, the editors note the following post is by TV, TDV Editor-in-Chief Jeff Berwick, and the headline is, uh, Are Federal Agents Learning Tyranny at the Holocaust Museum? It goes into explanation. In this age of unwarranted mass surveillance on emails and video calls, it might seem like Federal Bureau of Investigations our FBI and other intelligence agents seem more vested in tyranny than ever before. Perhaps that is because they are being schooled in it, according to CNN Money. At F all FBI Academy trainees learn about Nazi Germany and police state oppression. Quote, we send every one of our agents to the Holocaust Museum before their agents to know and understand what happens when an agency goes rogue. I love that part because Robert Mueller, of course, that's a quote from him, and um, the FBI was never rogue. It's there for, for national and federal security, and this is what is known as German Stasi. That's what it was called back in Nazi Germany, and now because Germany is only traded as a corporation on Dun & Bradstreet and located in the District of Columbia, Everybody's closing their eyes to these things, but the Federal Republic of Germany is a corporation, and Congress owns that corporation. And thus far, thus far, patriots are patronizing Congress and saying that they live in quote America, which is a style chain of events, actions of Congress, and on top of that, they have paid it to promote every known holocaust 
not only the German Holocaust, the Pol Pot Massacre, Vietnam, Japan, Korean War, and, and you saw what, what the American Congress did during the Korean War. Yeah, they got a doctor over there in Japan saying that uh, Tokyo should uh, no longer be inhabited. Right, and then you've got uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, look at the stock that Congress has done across the globe to raise it, to raise humanity, to make sure that there's nothing alive while their pockets are, are filled with uh, just the most egregious things. It's so disgusting to see um, the reports on patriotism. Now, when we step back for a minute and we meditate I don't know any patriots I see across my desk agents coming in as patriots I see Rod Class espousing the same thing over and over and over again which is the action of an agent yeah he always he, he refers to uh, judiciary act as it was a good thing right and he's holding certification that he is a DC citizen that means he's a corporation he's telling people how to become a private attorney general right so he's claiming to be a nation a foreign nation of the United Nations so he's cashing definition in definition under 28 USC 1603 right so you know you can't tell me that there's any patriots out there other than these federal agents or the useful idiots get caught up in that I mean I was caught up in that for a while yeah I want my constitution rights right but you know until I really got into that con that uh, commerce clause right but really when you were in there you never went off on anybody you never came across their page to promote the the crap uh, the spiel you didn't teach it and that's what Jesus had delineated for us in, in Matthew he says you know what um, some of them such as Rod class and uh, Donnelly Ray and all of these agents you're promoting the doctrine of the Pharisee, but even when I was a patriot, I wasn't promoting the doctrine of the Pharisee. I couldn't teach it. You know, there's a big difference because I, I never defended that. I couldn't. You know, I'd, I'd say, no, no, don't be racist, and I believe that, that there were racist citizens, and I believe that there was sexist citizens and all of these things. Oh, no, you don't want to be racist or sexist. But those were agents that I was dealing with trying to promote this propaganda. And once we use our discretion, we realize these things that, you know, these agents just have to go bye bye. And I've noticed since you gave them your fee schedule lately that it's been a lot less um, of an onslaught upon me as well um, with the agents and, and um, the influence. I know I had one on Thursday, but. That's one in comparison to like 20 at a time or 30 or however many they want to throw in there. Yeah, it seems kind of quiet out there with the, uh, you know, alternative provocateurs. Right, it's nice. Maybe they're realizing that they're being fodder. And, and you know, that it was so disgusting to read the... Um, stuff on the FBI holding uh, pedophilia charges against people and stuff because you can only do that to a pedophile I mean if they called me a pedophile they couldn't hold that over my head because I'm not a pedophile so there's nothing over my head and, and um, that's something that well uh, they rang in in the UK they rang in like 660 or something they you know, said in the headline the other day um, scouts doctors former police officers but didn't mention about anything about any lawmakers or attorneys. Right, which you know that's a fallacy. Um, so they're throwing, you know, here's the lawmakers and attorneys throwing uh, everybody else under the bus uh, first. Right, absolutely, and we're seeing that with cops and everything else. That's the function of the attorneys to make sure that Judas goes and hangs himself. That's always political suicide. I have to give a shout out to this dad in Daytona, Florida. I mean, that was something that was, I, I just love this man. Um, as reported on my Fox Tampa Bay, it's also on Boston uh, channels um, everywhere in the mainstream today. Uh, Daytona dad beats man he found allegedly raping his son. 
And uh, I got to send out kudos. This picture looks like this uh, rapist was pummeled pretty darn good. Uh, the, uh, I'll read a little bit. Daytona Beach, a Florida dad who told police he walked in on a man sexually abusing his child, left the suspect motionless and bleeding Friday morning on the living room floor, police said. The Daytona Beach News Journal reported that the suspect was found at the Daytona Beach home at about 1 a.m. Friday. The paper, citing their arrest report, said Raymond Frolander was found with several knots on his face and bleeding from the mouth. The 35-year-old father and his son were not identified, but the father reportedly walked in on Frolander sexually battering his son. The paper obtained the 911 call and reported that the dad told the dispatcher, quote, I just walked in a, on a grown man molesting and I got him in a bloody puddle for you, officer, end quote. He told the police that he didn't use any weapons in the beatings, nor did he the suspect. Uh, he asked the suspect any questions. Don't need to. He witnessed him raping his child. He told police that he didn't. Uh, sorry about that. Quote, he is nice and knocked out on the floor for you. End quote. The dad reportedly told police. The boy told police that Frolander took him to a back room. Uh, sorry about that. Um, it refreshed on me. Um, Let's see, took him to a back room of the house and pulled down his pants, the report said. The boy, 11, had been playing video games with friends before the alleged attack. Prolander was treated at an area hospital and allegedly told police, quote, I'm guilty when questioned. But isn't that something? When an attorney charges somebody for a crime, there's the option of guilty or not guilty. But when the evidence is there and... A witness is at their own authority. Something else, and the most amazing thing happens. And that is what Jesus taught compassion and justice. You remove all harm. You don't wait around for a judge to issue a restraining order. You don't ask somebody to protect your own child, right? I mean, that's stupid. No other biology acts as the human being has acted under the oppression of the attorney and I pray to God that this just keeps picking up and up because we don't need the attorney we have what are known as fathers the father and for so long we walked away from our protector and we allowed the media to vilify our protector and then what happened? Everybody started trusting these attorneys and black dresses and attorneys to represent them. And they're nothing but bankers. And that was the fall of Rome. That was Nazi Germany. That was Pol Pot. Cambodia. All of those are culminations of feminism. Culminations of, quote, child protection culminations of social services and what happens when we rely on the state rather than each other. And again, I'd like to send kudos out to this father for protecting one of our babies. Yeah, the uh, child molester would have died. Uh, I mean, what hold that father accountable at all? Nope. Nope. It would have been like an abortion because this guy has no sentience. Otherwise, he would not be preying on a child. He's a hunter. That's right. Yeah, we don't need that. It's got to be removed. And quickly, if we're to get through this, Tokyo should not be inhabited. So, again, going back to the Fukushima disaster, it was a result of, um, you know, the actions of attorneys. Absolutely. Fukushima, um, you've got those corporations, those are all located, Japan is located in the District of Columbia. Yeah, and it's, mean, all, it's all a presentation, and it's all uh, just uh, selling you consensus reality, and actually slamming it down your throat, using the funds that they've dried off of us to uh, sell it back to us. It's really sick. Oh, boy, but yeah, I mean, going back to this crash and... Um, well, plane shot down or whatever happened there. Um, the, let's see, story that the AP 
says rebel leader gives bizarre account of plane crash uh, a top pro-Russian rebel commander in eastern Ukraine is given a bizarre version of events surrounding the Malaysian jet, uh, uh, jetliner crash suggesting many of the victims may have died days before the plane took off now there's another video over at LiveLeak you can watch and if you look at the bodies you can see that uh, some of the bodies look bloated you know it takes a while for bodies to bloat like that a pro-rebel website uh, Ruskaya Vesna on Friday quoted Igor Gricken as saying he was told by people at the crash site that a significant number of the bodies weren't fresh adding that he was told they were drained of blood and reeked of decomposition right and that's what we're seeing all throughout today and again this is a big story off of the Associated Press itself and um, you notice how you know CNN has a different spin and Telegraph has a different spin on this one and we already know what Congress does yeah the, yeah, the Daily Mail's uh, pushing the lie right and um, sadly you know we were uh, in uh, Indiana News earlier and uh, a University of Indiana doctoral student uh, was supposedly killed in that crash. Well, who's murdering these human beings and why were they murdered before the plane was shot down? Was the plane shot down because they had to hide these deaths? Now, the majority of the deaths uh, being reported from this uh, Ukrainian or Malaysian flight. Uh, we're from the Netherlands, and the Netherlands again, the kingdom is in uh, located in the District of Columbia. And when you go back to their treaties with the United States Incorporated, it happens to be that China holds the greatest stock in the Netherlands, and in Belgium, and in Holland. And we're seeing a lot of movement with. Um, you know, China playing with the, uh, getting rid of the pharmaceuticals, uh, going after pharmaceutical companies, but then, you know, revamping their real estate. And of course, what is real estate of the law? It refers to the human being. So it looks like they're calling Yeah, it I down. covered that on Wednesday pretty thoroughly. The letter A out of Black's 8th edition. My gosh, is that, if that doesn't say, uh, it all, um, you know, with the uh, stock assignment. And again, uh, just as a quick recap on that, we didn't argue the birth certificate or the certificate of live birth. Uh, what we came in and did is divested our stock from uh, the House of Representatives, Congress, and uh, appointed uh, myself. Uh, the executor over my own estate, you know, revesting back into my own house. Right, and, and mine. And, um, yeah, for all the sovereign states, it's it's the same. And a female always comes over, to, comes under the male's house, okay. Um, but the uh, thing we, uh, you know, we didn't really argue. We said, hey, quit trading us a stock we're not you, you know that's a uh, fraud now you know it's uh, securities fraud and again you know a the letter a out of blacks means security uh, a baby boy a baby girl stock announcements in the newspaper and um, you know so you know they're they've got a lot of securities fraud on their hands now because it's not only for our house so we pulled out everybody you know the presumption of death was broken right. for the civil death aspect of it but they were declared dead because we couldn't find any uh, existence of life anywhere right and we had to switch out the security itself because once we came and um, what board actually done was a hostile takeover of my stock and at that time, that hostile takeover made the executor of the subsidiary under the estate, the real estate, and 
we came in on behalf of everybody because that estate, one, was taken at the Coronation Charter. They took everything at the Coronation Charter, the Charter of Liberties, as it's called. And so when we came in on behalf of the United States, that's what happened. I am the United States foe, or the, the name on the case is Kurt Martin, of course, came in as the United States on behalf of everybody. So then everybody lives in me, of course, which is what Jesus said. And it's so profound to, um, you know, walk in this way. And um, reading through their uh, rules on negotiable instruments, that's one of the number one rules. They can only trick out the estate if they have consent to do so. If there's a living entity there, if there's not an in infant there that they're dealing with, they're not able to have their hands in there, and that security is void. And sadly, that's what happened to Kenosha County, Wisconsin. That's what happened to McHenry County, Wisconsin. And that, that dummy there, that was hilarious because Scott K. Summers, while talking to me, says, yeah, I have to have a diagnosis in order to, to um, discharge congressional bankruptcy. But he was arguing that he didn't get service. But he was referring in the audio to having been served. Yeah, that's, that it's, doesn't cut it under the public law. Evidence is evidence. No, and, and he, he, said he he said he got it. Right, and he said it's just unfair that you shoved that under the door. You must, 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 must get an attorney. Right, he was so pissed off that, that I had served him a summon. He got it. He got the notice from a duly authorized... He missed his court date, by the way. Right, they all did, and it was so... It was so profound that, um, you know, here he is arguing that it's not fair that he wasn't served by, you know, uh, somebody akin to him. Well, of course I'm not an attorney. I don't worship the same God that he does. My God is absolutely different than his. And, um, you know, it's just, I've never met anybody so idiotic or spoken to anybody so idiotic. It was really sad. Yeah, well, like Morpheus said, y'all look alike. Yeah, that's about it, too. <laughs> Careful, the attorneys are going to get us for racial profiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're not politically correct here on the public law. Well, and they're not even of the human race. They can only claim that they're cro magnon or a psychopath. There's only two options because um, through biological testing, they're missing the frontal lobe. They cannot evidence that they have a frontal lobe. If they had a frontal lobe, they would have empathy, and they would not be an attorney. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's very interesting uh, what happens when evidence comes into play. And it's as to, you know, you were reading on Wednesday, not on the Bon Rocco show, some of the uh, boogies maxims as adapted to the United States Constitution. You know, and, and again, one of my favorites is... Where truth is, fiction of law does not exist. And, um, you know, to have witnessed that with my own eyes has been so profound, so amazing. Yeah, well, but the charade continues for whatever reason. Uh, you know, we still got uh, people being held as prisoners of war. Um, by the United States Incorporated, right. and let's see here, um, but uh, Blacklisted News has a headline, our gov government's using evidence of homosexuality and child pornography to blackmail people, including high-level officials. Absolutely. Um, we've known that for years, you know. Um, one of the ones, remember Lewis Ewing used to be all over me, like white on rice. He used to terrorize me like crazy. And uh, one day, you know, Jack Bauer, before Jack passed away, uh, Mike Golden, he had evidence to all of us that here poor Lewis Ewing had had a baby die of SIDS years before that. And the FBI was holding that over his head, threatening constantly that if he stepped out of line, they would charge him with the murder of his child. Yep, and then he stopped when you brought that up, didn't he? Right, and I and I prayed that he's okay, and he got away from the FBI, and of course I always pray that he stopped and re repented because that's what that is. And you realize something's—I mean, that's silly. 
if you don't have anything to fear, if your child died of SIDS, there's no evidence that your child died of murder. And that's why they're holding it over his head. And, um, of course, these pedophiles are just, oh, they're just disgusting. We've seen that over and over. And they're the ones that, uh, run your quote-unquote government that you're patronizing out there, people, globally. I'm speaking to everybody. Um... It doesn't matter what the face of your government is, all roads lead to Rome, and they're all corporations located in Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. Absolutely. It's insane. Um, but this is the grim facts. And uh, so, yeah, British Security Services infiltrated and funded the notorious pedophile information exchange in a covert operation identifying possibly black mile establishment figures, a home office whistleblower alleges. Former civil servant has told detectives investigating the activities of pedophiles in national politics that the Metro Met Metropolitan Police Special Branch was orchestrating the child sex lobbying group in the late 1970s and early 1980s. The whistleblower says he was also warned, of, warned off asking why such a notorious group was being handed government money. Whistleblower Mr. X whose identity uh, blacklisted news or whoever's covering the story uh, has agreed to protect became a very senior figure in local government before retiring a few years ago so private process elimina uh, elimination out there somebody could probably figure out who he is he has given a formal statement to the effect to det detectives from operation Fernbridge right so what he's doing is informing on the other pedophiles, although he was ingrained with them, otherwise he wouldn't have this information, and that's what we've seen over and over again. You know, that case in, in um, Illinois, it was outside of Joliet, Illinois, a little girl was being sexually abused, and the psychiatrist ran right in there, and they said, no, we don't want this, this uh, sexual abuser charged. Then a GAL put their hand in there, and the judge put their hand in there, and CPS came back with evidence that the child had gotten genital warts from her uh, uh, sexual abuser to voluntarily unfound the case, which is not even a term used for child protection services. And I've got that report. I shared that report for years. And, you know, the, the uh, FBI has hidden this and hidden this and hidden this, although that child is part of the sex trafficking industry and it's maintained by such as Jeffrey Leving and his law firm there and of course he presents the CIA presentation of fathers and families a man's rights group because they're false flags see they're not father's rights that's a false flag it's established by the CIA to maintain the child sex trade industry yeah yeah, so yeah, this whistleblower, I don't know, he had probably has something on him, and, and so, you know, I mean, he probably came forward uh, because uh, he sees the thing coming down, right. and he doesn't want to get nailed. Nope, and, and those are the rules of politics. Roll on them before they roll on, me, uh, roll, roll on you. Mm -hmm. That's a game of politics. Yeah, we saw that with Grimm, Michael Grimm, the senator. Absolutely, we saw that with Scott, Scott K. Summers, when He's he was under fire. He, he pointed the finger right at the sheriff. But they still keep going forward until they get locked up or shut down somehow. Right. Because uh, Michael Graham's still running, you know, and um, Scott K. Summers is still running amok. Uh, yep. And that one that we indicted in, in South Bend, that, uh, uh, what was his name, uh, Michael Dvorak, he ended up taking out two of his underlings uh, just not even a month and a half ago. As the fall guys for himself, trying to make himself yeah. better. Yeah, he was the uh, prosecutor and the um, underling prosecutor was out of town, uh, you know, and... They just happened to be... Just happened to catch him uh, taking a leak in the woods on his trip and uh, caught him with a bunch of drugs. Yep, of course they did. And that's cannibalism, you know. Sadly, that's what they do to each other when there's no other funding source available. Uh, they kill citizens. They kill, you know... Almost 300 people on that flight that Congress murdered uh, in order to uh, pull their life insurance claims. And of course, um, that's something that is very profound to um, have learned recently that the majority 
of the victims on that flight were of the Netherlands. And of course, the biggest bank or trust fund of the Netherlands is called the Netherlands American Amity Trust Incorporated, located at 1350 I Street Northwest, Suite 1010, and nowhere else other than Washington, D.C. 20005. And again, Congress, 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 Congress. And of course, Congress's minions are the General Counsel, the Department of Justice, which is under the judiciary. The E4s, of course, are the Federal Judges and Magistrates Association. And um, this is the game. They're pulling everybody's life insurance by killing them and cashing in because they lost their Treasury access because they lost their special drawing rights as they were evidence for human trafficking and perpetrating genocide. Well, you know, we're trying to show you all the evidence of how they shut off the kingdom. And if you look, you can find it everywhere. I saw a video the other day how a guy converted his lawnmower uh, to run uh, on fumes, okay, using uh, a, a glass jar and an apparatus, remove the carburetor completely, and uh, actually, if you go back far enough, you can see this all the way back with uh, uh, Rockefeller and the oil industry uh, getting rid of the uh, the fish carburetors. They were even allowed to, uh, you know, get on the market. And um, but the the bottom line is that combustion engines are meant to run on fuse. I mean, they run better on fuse, and they use a lot, a lot less gas. You can get a lot better efficiency uh, if they didn't have these oil companies shutting off the accessibility uh, by patents to you know uh, different methods of atomization of the fuel. You know, like uh, the traditional butterfly carbs, uh, carburetors, and, um, you know, they just waste gas. They're designed to waste gas. It was better business for Rockefeller back in the day. Uh, now, here's a new story that comes out. Uh, new study shows how existing cropland could feed billions more. Feeding a growing human population without increasing stresses on earth strained land and water resources may seem like an impossible challenge but according to a new report by researchers at the University of Minnesota's Institute on the Environment focusing efforts to improve food systems on a few specific regions crops and actions could make it possible to both meet the basic needs of three billion more people and decrease the agriculture's environmental footprint so We've always had that ability, but Congress has always been... Efficiency is not good business for Congress. Right. Waste and hemorrhaging funds and uh, keep convincing us that we're the debtors is, is uh, the better business model for Congress. Absolutely. Not for the people. The people always take the, uh, the brunt of the situation. Right, the human beings. They're telling us we're overpopulated, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, you're worth worthless bread gobblers, blah, blah, blah. And they're the biggest wasters and polluters on the planet with their corporations dumping all kinds of uh, toxic waste into water uh, supplies and rivers, etc., etc. Now polluting the entire Pacific Ocean with uh, uh, radioactivity. And, uh, you know... The Gulf Oil. The, the, the F-35, they poured how many billions of dollars into that thing, and then they had to ground it here. Now, supposedly it's back, uh, uh, you know, uh, back in the air again. But, you know, that thing's been a disaster, and that's been by design. Right. Just to be a money pit, just to have something to throw money in. Right, and it's hard to find now, but there is a documentary called Who Killed the Electric Car? And, um, well, you can still find the uh, light bulb conspiracy, which is the same concept. Right. 
and um, who killed the electric car is one of the ones that opened my eyes to this waste. And um, that was years ago. It's, it's hard to find, but uh, you can still find it. And of course, I have copies. So if you cannot find it, then just get with me on Skype because we can send files through there as well. So there, yeah, all sorts of things that could be done. But again, I mean, the attorneys came up with this idea of patenting things. Just and that's another mechanism to shut off the kingdom. Keep us as uh, debt slaves, feeding their human trafficking genocidal machine that's sold as uh, a good thing, of course. Absolutely. By the media, which is in their pockets as well. Right. And, and that's the definition of hegemony, is maintaining the power quo status structures and um, the use of the media. And I urge everybody, again to go read up on, on Gromsky's theory of hegemony, although it existed before that, uh, Gromsky did theorize it, and, um, you know, it talks about the state and civil society, the actions of force, and then the uh, reaction of consent, um, which, of course, is a patriotism, and if, if there's force that results in consent, that's always, 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 always the action of Stockholm Syndrome. That is always, always the human suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. And another story, um, I guess this is uh, probably the same uh, one we saw over at Rance. NBC News pulls veteran reporter from Gaza after witnessing Israeli attack on children. Yeah, uh, Ayman Moheldin, the NBC News correspondent who personally witnessed yesterday's killing by Israel of four Palestinian boys on a Gazan beach, who was received widespread praise for his brave and innovative coverage of the conflict, has been told by NBC executives to leave Gaza immediately. Absolutely. You, you can't be a. You can't be a. Uh, you know, a real reporter, if you work for one of these corporations like NBC, CBS, CNN. Or anybody under the control of the Broadcasting Board of Governors, which but, has, right on its side, it says it has full international control of all civil media. FBI warns driverless cars could be used as lethal weapons. Of course, uh, Aren't drones that already? Yeah. Right. How many innocent people have died because of the the um, drone activities by the military industrial complex, you know? And, and, and they're going after fake terrorists. I mean, Osama bin Laden. Uh, Always. You know, it's uh, right out of uh, 1984's playbook there. Emmanuel Goldstein was his name in uh, 1984. You're right. And Al-Qaeda is traded on Dun Bradstreet as Alston, comma, Al, 4201 Georgia Avenue Northwest. Uh, they joined the Confederacy with the uh, during the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917. Uh, they were met with over hostility from President Wilson's administration, of course. And it's so interesting... Um, that in 1918 the Allied powers, including the United States, began a military intervention in the Russian Civil War, and you know what happened there. I mean, you have the, uh, uh, what was it called, the, I can never pronounce it, just one second. Um, oh, sorry about that, folks, I lost my note. Um, oh, it was in 1918, I just had it off. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was Bresk, B E R or B R E S K, uh, whatever the treaty. Um, just a second. Saw a report today on um, the Hell Wars how the United States military has been training, uh, quote unquote, uh, ISIS. Absolutely. Uh, in the Philippines, you know, hiring uh, the brown looking people, um, you know, and they were training in black masks. Yep. And ISIS is traded on down in Bradstreet. 
it's it's all right in Washington D.C. This is Congress, the United States Incorporated. They got to pay their taxes. Yep, they all have tax treaty agreements. You can find that right at the IRS.gov. Um, you know, again, Netherlands is there. Um, all of them. And I'm not finding my note. I must have deleted it or something, or updated and forgot to save it. Or I'll get it up by next week, and I'll have it on the um, Tammy Peppermint Dollar site. Uh, that's where I dump everything, so I don't lose it like I did tonight. Full disclosure and accountability said to be missing from seven billion dollar Citigroup misconduct settlement. Oh, of course. Uh, that's all, you know, the gameplay of J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, U.S. Bank. You know, the Franklin scandal, we were talking about that earlier today. And um, Franklin Bank became People's Bank. Everybody thinks that it just went away after, you know, it was reported on. It just changed its name. Joseph Biden is a signatory on that bank. And, of course, uh, People's Bank offers hearts and minds to females that want to start up a small business. Well, why do they offer these females money? Well, those females are trading drugs uh, for children. They're selling their children in the, in the human sex trafficking industry. And you can find these numbers in the 2009 uh, report on human trafficking that came out through the United Nations, which is all of these corporations united. Uh, somewhere, people are selling their Teenage daughters for food, you know, and of course, uh, the whole food food shortage thing is another uh, creation, a created crisis. Absolutely, but there's no, no, absolutely no excuse for that. No, absolutely not. But the people are going to be, uh, you know, that have a propensity to do such things, it's only fueled by... Uh, you know, being cattle prodded, you know, with such circumstances. Right. But there's been times, you know, I, I when I uh, contemplate things like that, I, I realize there's been times when I've been, you know, I was staying in the car and never once would I choose to harm my children in any way, shape, or form. And, and um, just out of the question. So anybody that can be bought off as Judas and sell children is still responsible for their actions. They, they will be held accountable for their works and actions. There's no, absolutely no reason for those things. You know, sell a kidney, give blood. You know, I've given blood and, at times and um, things like that were, you know, I felt like I couldn't survive otherwise and um, it, there's no reason to uh, harm a child ever or traffic a child. Well, Microsoft on Thursday announced it plans to cut up to 18,000 jobs this year, its deepest ever cuts, as the company looked to dig us to digest its Nokia acquisition and reposition itself for the future. It's interesting that a lot of the uh, workers that are being laid off from um, this particular corporation, Microsoft, were laid off in the Netherlands as well. Hmm. Seems uh, some compelling uh, evidence here uh, pointing back to uh, the ne Netherlands as a corporation under District of Columbia, of course. Right, and it's still considered to be a kingdom under Congress. And again, uh, Congress is bankrupt and still maintaining and calling itself a king at various uh, venues, you know, such as uh, England. England, the laws of England happened to be the public law, not the laws of England, not the common law, but the laws of England, which means the land of angels. That is the public law. It's always been the public law. Always, always, always. England is not a location. It is a corporation. And, of course, uh, quote, Queen Elizabeth is a commoner. She's on welfare from the House of Commons. Um, otherwise, if she was a queen, she'd be getting royalties. Interesting story here on, uh, again, blacklisted. Uh, Sci-fi writers predicted civil war in Ukraine. 
Absolutely. Cause it's Russian CIA. sci-fi writers, by the way. It's the CIA. All of them are CIA productions. Yeah, editor's note says intelligence officers had to be very aware of these novels since uh, Floyder Brezhen uh, is defense minister and commander of the armed forces in the People's Republic of Donetsk. Last June, a pulp fiction thriller was published in Paris under the title Le Chemin de Damas. Its lurid green and black cover featured a busty woman clutching a pistol, and its plot included the requisite car chases, explosion, and sexual conquest. Unlike most paperbacks, though, this one attracted the attention of intelligence officers and diplomats on three continents. Set in the midst of serious civil war, the book offered a vivid character sketches of that country's embattlement ruler, Bashar al-Assad, and his brother, Meyer, along with several little known lieutenants and allies. It's detailed a botched coup attempt secretly supported by the American and Israel intelligence agencies, and most striking of it all, it described an attack on one of Syria's regime's command centers near the presidential palace in Damascus. A month before an attack in the same place killed several of the, uh, several of the regime's top figures. It was prophetic. I was told by one veteran Middle East analysis who knows Syria well and preferred to remain nameless, it really gave you a sense of the atmosphere inside the regime of the way these people operate in a way I hadn't seen before. Absolutely, because it is intelligence, it's artificial intelligence, and the CIA is a production company. It produces intelligence. It's like And the popular culture, uh, you know, is got to be directed by the intelligence right. to write some of these things for the effect of predictive programming. Absolutely, and you look at... You know, recently I was exposed to, um, I, I like it, it's called Under the Dome. Um, a Stephen King, uh, I guess they were written by Stephen King in the series. And um, watching it, it is the political construct. And if you, you know, take the dome, take away the physical aspects of the dome, and it becomes politics. And, you know, the dome can be uh, a symbol of psychological warfare against humanity. And, you know, all of the control is within that little dome or the, the psychological construct of politics. And, and um, it's, it's quite a profound uh, program. Yeah, Stephen King, popular media, and, of course, television is... The uh, is the uh, biggest disseminator of the uh, culture, and you know it's entertainment, which is used primarily for propaganda and predictive programming. Right, programming, uh, and that's what the marketers call it. They call it programming. And again, you know, we've been teaching law enforcement this week as to. Uh, their programming that's used against them. And one of the most profound books is called Law Enforcement Intelligence, colon, A Guide for State, Local, and Tribal Law Enforcement Agencies. And in that, you'll see uh, Understanding Contemporary Law Enforcement, Brief History of Law Enforcement Intelligence, Intelligence-Led Policing, The Integration of Community Policing and Law Enforcement Intelligence, uh, chapter 5 is the intelligence process. How to socially engineer your new favorite law enforcement product. Law enforcement intelligent classifications, products, and dissemination. Let's make it easier to engineer your law enforcement product. Managing the intelligence function, human resource issues, networks and systems, intelligence requirements, and threat assessments. Now we talk about this a lot from the back end, such as that baby who got burned by the, um, uh, whatever that thing was, the flash grenade, and uh, how uh, corporate counsel is integral to promoting the vilification of law enforcement that's been artificially 
um, induced into such a state because they're following policy and procedure. They were armed for war games. So dispatch and the psychiatrist behind those law enforcement officers, behind that SWAT team, had already prepared them for a war and told them they were going into a war and they prepared accordingly. And, and that's part of the intelligence design and the use against law enforcement from the hands of the Federal Bureau of Investigation through corporate counsel and of course directed by general counsel. And there's nobody above general counsel except for Congress, you know. You've got the judiciary, but that's under Congress. Banking semantic itself. And Banking on human beings, once again, it's always the same thing over and over again. Human being becomes a special deposit for Congress so they can offset their congressional bankruptcy. It's all a facade, people. I mean, people that espouse to fight the new world order and say to go vote for this individual instead of that individual and they're still voting for Congress. Well this Ursa Institute, the one that indoctrinates law enforcement, it was profound to find on their their site, you can find this at ursainstitute.org uh, forward slash index.html. They also are the ones programming the HIV AIDS epidemic. Now noted um, on that uh, victims list for that shot down Malaysian plane was uh, there was uh, several that were going to an AIDS conference allegedly right and that's all programming according to their site uh, their description on the index page says there is Institute or UI is a nonprofit full-service social interest consulting firm engaged in behavioral science research Program design, development, and evaluation, training, and technical assistance, survey and market research, which is the Delphi technique, and social marketing and media advocacy to public and private sector policy makers and managers at the local, regional, statewide, and national levels. Founded in 1975, Earth Institute has completed projects in a wide array of fields. Over the last 28 years, our hundreds of projects have involved us in research and support in HIV, AIDS prevention, behavior change treatment, public health and mental health programming. That is not a typo, folks. Public health and mental health programming, drug and alcohol abuse, abuse prevention and treatment programming, family planning, child abuse and neglect, crime and delinquency programming, research and support in the fields of law enforcement, adjudication and corrections. Located in San Francisco, the agency has worked throughout the country and state of California providing training and technical assistance, community-based program planning, implementation and evaluation, and social marketing services. Our work emphasizes community-level interventions, community-driven research and evaluation, and culturally competent training and technical assistance. These are the folks that teach Babylonian theory. Throughout our history, we have ha been sensitive to issues of culture and diversity and have established a reputation for excellence in cultural diversity. They've established a reputation for excellence in polarizing human beings, cultural diversity, and multi-ethnic and multilingual group of psychologists health educators, sociologists, attorneys, anthropologists, educators, community development specialists, public administrators, media and public relations specialists, and of course computer programmers and analysts. Project teams are supplemented by, the, by a cadre of expert consultants who provide specialized services to clients when needed. There's more. But the Ursa Institute is associated with Polaris Research and Development Incorporated, a minority-owned for-profit corporation with so long history of service in the fields of multicultural awareness, community-based program design and implementation. UI shares administrative systems and support with Polaris while maintaining operationally independent. And again, it's right out there 
ursa-institute.org. You know, that's clean hands when they put it out there and tell you what they're doing. Yeah, they tell you they're programming you. They program law enforcement, and AIDS is a program. We all know, all of our listeners know that AIDS is actually the use of trimethylsulfate, which is a chemotherapeutic antibiotic, otherwise known as Bactrim and Septra. And what happens is chronic long-term use, of course, breaks down the immunity. And, of course, you're going to have a diagnosis of immunodeficiency. But it's not caused by sex. It's not caused by anything other than these prescription medications. And, of course, my pet peeve is all of this. And, um, you know, they murdered one of my favorite singers, uh, Queen, uh, Freddie Mercury. And, yeah. um, you know, when the UN was in Africa doing this, they were promoting the benefits of circumcision to prevent AIDS, which was, there's no such thing. You know, it, it, they weren't promoting what condom use or anything, as if there was a disease. They were saying, if you get circumcised, it'll prevent AIDS. Well, we have research that circumcision does not prevent any STD, and in reality, when you're not circumcised, you have better protection from all known bacteria and diseases. That's what the head of that penis is for. It's supposed to be intact. Yeah, this is all, you know, more actions under the, uh, what, what would you call it, pedagogy? Gen yeah, and genocide itself, because genocide they're, they're itself, altering, yeah. that is male genital mutilation. And it's sold in the United States Incorporated as such as circumcision. But it, bottom line, that's male genital mutilation. They're torturing baby boys at birth. Now you want to go over to some police news? Absolutely. Um, the Trumps okay. are really ramping it up against the law enforcement, and it's very sad to see. All right, yeah, I got one here um, Elkhart, Indiana. Uh, tensions are still high between some people in Elkhart and police after an incident earlier this month. I'm not sure what that incident is offhand, but we've seen these quote-unquote incidents all over globally. Right. I was involved with an incident with law enforcement in that area, South Bend, and, and they're all indoctrinated to follow nothing but the orders of corporate counsel to a T. And, you know, if, if anybody's wondering why citizens are hating law enforcement, it's because of corporate counsel. I mean, we, that's, what, that's the first entity we see is law enforcement, but it's corporate counsel behind law enforcement that's doing this. Yeah, that's, you know, that's one of the calls they're making, that they're detaining you for a long time and making a bunch of phone calls. They're, they're contacting corporate counsel. What do I do? What do I Absolutely. do? Absolutely. And... and we know since that point in time when we were terrorized by law enforcement that they were innocent. They didn't know what they were doing. It was all corporate counsel. Andrew Seward, Evidence himself, uh, Chaplow, David Chaplow, all of these attorneys and black dresses, and, and we followed it all the way through. And to all of our listeners or new listeners, you can find every bit of this evidence throughout the audios for the last two years. City officials say an Elkhart police officer patrolling the area was beaten by a man on Garfield Avenue. Okay, there's, there's the incident. After complaints from people who live in Garfield, community members held a meeting Friday night to work on improving the relationship between police and community. Tiffany, Gayford, uh, Tiffany Gaylord lives in the area and thinks it's a step in the right direction, but community is key. We have to learn how to communicate with each other and... That's both ways, says Gaylord. We don't want to be cursed at and put down no more than they do. We don't deserve it, and neither do they. Well, that sounds like the Delphi technique, that everybody needs to get along. But why was he beaten in that community? Was he trying well, to rob somebody? Into that. Well, we're going to get into that. Earlier this week, around 150 people went to a town hall meeting held by the city to ask the community for ways to reduce the violence in the southern part of Elkhart. Well, number one, adhere to the public law. Period. All right? That's 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 the only way to stop all of this civil war going on between cops and citizens. You got to adhere to public law. That means cops, you got to start picking up the orders out of our court and quit answering to these 
corporate counsel attorneys that are throwing everybody under the bus, including you cops, for commercial crimes under 27 CFR 72.11. That's key. That's everything. All of their language is built around injury, bringing into law, as we discuss that, des that definition over and over again, it has nothing to do with harm against a human being, what they're charging you for. The charges out of the United States court, lowercase, United States of Beings, is to hold those accountable that harm human beings. Including law enforcement. Now, law enforcement, you all are human beings. The majority of you got into law enforcement because you wanted to protect humanity. Now, if you look under the definition of Lucifer, you are the fallen angel. You took money to put the wrong person in hell. Right, and the hell we're referring to is the definition of Black's Law, a room below the exchequer. Right, where the king's debtors are kept. Congress is not the king. Humanity is the king. It's, they've always claimed to have sovereign immunity, but they don't. No, under their own laws. 28 U.S.C. Uh, chapter 97, the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act, they're all corporations. They're all foreign governments. They are not sovereign. They're acting under acts of commerce and private acts. If you do not realize they're acting under acts of commerce and private acts, go read the first sentence of the Uniform Commercial Code Act, UCC, and 27 CFR 72.11, the definition of a commercial crime. That's it. No further evidence is needed. Those are acts of commerce, and private acts, of course, under, uh, defined are acts by a president, executive orders. But the attorney is going to come and say, well, we've got all these rules and procedures and policies that you have to follow. and Right, let's you know. take it to the Bar Association. Let, let's have the Bar sanction these attorneys. No, 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 no. No, no, no. We evidence are perpetrating human trafficking by admission of a, of a federal judge, Philip P. Simon. He said that there's a proper way and an improper way of human trafficking. Human trafficking is human trafficking. That's kind of like what the attorneys have already done with the definition of abortion or the definition of neonaticide or the definition of infanticide. Now, neonaticide is, is the murder of a child that's just been born. Infanticide is defined by the attorney of killing a child within the first year of life. The first year of life, as defined by the attorney. Abortion is the same. Life begins at life. Life does not begin with a concept. Now, you all are absolutely indoctrinated. And if you would like the research, if you want the evidence of this, I have the evidence of this. Law enforcement has been tortured above and beyond what normal citizens are tortured with, according to the evidence. And then to top that off, law enforcement has been so vilified by attorneys that they are promoting and engaging in civil war. They are prompting law enforcement to kill citizens and citizens to kill law enforcement when in actuality and as to relativity, we're all on the same side. To a term means to pay homage to another lord. Or they, turn you over to another landlord. Right. They're your adversary. That is the definition of Satan. Now some... Uh Updates on that, just out uh, an hour ago, uh, tweets from policemisconduct.net, which are attorneys, and they're throwing the cops under the bus at uh, policemisconduct.net. Uh, Beaufort, South Carolina, police officer pled guilty to simple assault against his 10-year-old stepdaughter. He resigned. Warrington, Oregon, police officer 
arrested on charges related to the sale of guns. L.A. California officer allegedly caught on video using baton to repeatedly strike man on knees charged with felony assault. Uh, let's see, just two hours ago, update on Hidalgo, Texas sheriff who pled guilty to money laundering, sentenced to five years in prison. So, <laughs> how do you like them apples? Uh, three hours ago, Chesterton, Colorado, South Carolina detective fired had sexual relationship with murder suspect's mother and lied about it. Uh, three hours ago, Omaha, Nebraska officer facing uh, crim charges in CXNW arrest caught on video pulled no contest to obstructing government operations. Well, that one sounds like cannibalism. Can we get extra information on that? Yes. Yeah, you can pull uh, up their tweets here. They got links for the stories here. I'll pull this one up. I mean, that that one was so profound this week of the detective charged with providing information to the attorney. Now, he was convicted and found guilty of providing information that was unlawful to the attorney, according to the attorneys. However, they reported that they didn't have enough evidence to charge the attorney, but she's the one that was given the evidence. The evidence of that is in his indictment. So what's going on here? Uh, it says, the headline reads, uh, this is uh, KETV 7 ABC. Officer who disposed of memory card makes deal. And uh, so busy loading up advertisements. That I can't get to the story. Uh, so let's see here. We'll come back to that in a second, I guess. Uh, let's see. Update Pierce County, Georgia Deputy Sheriff sentenced to more than seven years in prison for protecting drug dealers. Well, that one sounds, you know, lawful enough, but why is the attorney not charged? Because they're the ones that directed it. Denver County Sheriff's deputies suspended for allegedly using inappropriate force. Uh, five hours ago, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, police officer arrested on domestic violence charge for the second time. Six hours ago, Montgomery, Alabama, police officer being charged with domestic violence following an arrest. Pittsburgh, PA, seven hours ago, jury in federal court found two police officers used excessive force during an arrest. Uh, update in Washington Park, Illinois, police officer given probation, admitted, brought drugs into county jail for inmate. Wow, well, this one out, um, the one I was speaking of, is reported out of Australia from WAToday.com. Dot AU lawyer lover Kristen Clohesse escapes CCC charges. And this came out on the 16th, of course. The Corruption and Crime Commission has defended its decision not to charge the lawyer lover of a corrupt WA detective, saying there was insufficient evidence to pursue a case against her. Kristen Clohesse, a one-time V8 supercar model who worked for Hammond Legal and is married to outspoken Perth lawyer John Hammond, was not charged after, get this, well, quote, sensitive police files were leaked to her by former detective Carl Casilli. Now, he was indicted for this. On Tuesday, Casilli was sentenced to nine months in jail and fined $2,000 after pleading guilty to 17 charges, including illegally accessing information on a police com computer to give Ms. Clohesse, who was having an affair with at the time, it is understood the WA Police Internal Affairs Unit referred the matter to OC or CCC, who laid charges against the officer in August of last year, but not Ms. Clohesse. Questions have now been raised by several WA lawyers and police officers about why she was not charged as a party to the crime. Under the WA criminal code, any person who is, quote, party to an offense can be charged for enabling, aiding, or procuring another person to commit that offense. And that's what so often happens with these law enforcement officers. 
they believe that the attorney is the authority and so they act on their demands and their requests and their orders everything else because that that's who's writing the judicial orders is these attorneys and black dresses and corporate counsel attorneys and uh, all you're seeing is the rubber stamp that's put on them but it's very profound that this detective was rolled on by the attorney I'm not you know protecting these FBI detectives in any way shape or form but I wanted to make law enforcement all law enforcement aware of what's going on because if, if he could be convicted of passing information to her the evidence that she got the information is enough to convict her that's evidence right. not according to attorney work product doctrine right. got through the gotta go through the correct uh, procedures and court rules and regulations and uh, you know, star deceases again, you know. It's just sad. It's Communism. Like cannibalism. Case precedents and all. Back to the story in Omaha, Nebraska. Let's see, a former Omaha police officer facing criminal charges in connection with a controversial arrest caught on video last year. He's made a plea deal. And I did indeed uh, see the video of uh, his uh, throwdown of the sky, which seemed quite violent. In court Wednesday, James. Can sell a 32 and a no contest please to two misdemeanor counts of obstructing governmental operations. Prosecutors alleged can sell a dispose of a memory card from a cell phone possibly used to record the March 21st, 2013 incident. In one video from another cell phone posted on YouTube, one officer is seen pulling Octavius Johnson to the ground by the neck near 33rd and Seward Streets. Then a swarm of other officers chased one of the Johnson brothers into a home. Officers had initially sent, uh, had been sent to the area to investigate a parking complaint. A parking complaint! Commercial crime! A ridiculous commercial crime at that. Uh, soon after the YouTube video went viral, Omaha Police Chief Todd Schmader launched an investigation to allegations that police use excessive force. As a result, four officers, including the commanding officer, were relieved of duty. Other officers were reassigned. Testimony revealed Kinsella did not find any video of the incident on the cell phone he recovered, but he is still uh, he still removed the memory card and threw it out the window. Kinsella faces up to one year in prison and a $1,000 fine for each count sentencing is scheduled for August 28th. Well, and it looks like he took the fall for corporate counsel that directed these things to yeah. occur. Now, again, it's sad that these officers are maintaining as a fall guy for acting on the directives of corporate counsel. Yeah. And we have I mean, numerous accounts, of evidential accounts of of the same thing occurring. Uh, 911 calls cut up by corporate counsel and um, such as those things and I've got the um, evidence of the same call, the same time, the same incident, uh, different recordings that I received from uh, dispatch and you know I went through the attorneys and um, by the time I got it, it did not match the same incident that I had on recording uh, in another uh, manner. Let's see, uh, let's see, update in Berthoud, Colorado, previously reported uh, April 28th, a now fired police officer was sentenced to three years of supervised probation and 30 days in jail. Work release program for physically abusing a 15 year old girl for years. Seems pretty light. Absolutely. So he's a good pedophile, and they're protecting this one. Durham, North Carolina, police chief has officially barred officers from making up phony 911 calls in order to gain access to private residences without a search warrant. Several officers lied about 911 hang-up calls to convince residents to consent to searches of their homes, an officer said under oath. All right, now that officer was directed by corporate counsel. You know this. What right. benefit does does a law enforcement officer have for to to uh, maintain these searches and seizures? Gets they, to keep his job and his paycheck and well, be you know rewarded. Right, and that's it. But corporate counsel is cashing in on these things when they come into your home, and everybody needs to roll over on corporate counsel and stop being the fall guys. New Orleans, Louisiana, police officer accused of trying to kill his girlfriend pled not guilty to charges of attempted second-degree murder and simple battery. 
Miami, Florida, two police officers are under investigation after getting into a fight during a traffic stop and was caught on camera. Well, wait a second. If it was a mutual fight, why are they charged with anything? Because the seizure's got to get its cut. Why is he Obviously. getting a cut out of the prostitution of human beings? Because that's what they do. They're counters. Well, that was a mutual occurrence, and it d doesn't sound like anybody was claiming assault or anything, right? These were two adults. They were duking it out to do whatever. That's reality. That's relativity. You know, in the wild, lions fight. Other males fight. They, they do that. It's nothing that... That uh, usually that doesn't result in death. They end up going out as drinking buddies later after they resolve their differences. Now, why is corporate counsel prostituting these two officers? Because that's what they do. Why is it tolerated? Well, the, the, the question I have is why is humanity still uh, tolerating these leeches of humanity to you know remain in existence? Call attorneys. That's my question. Right. Law enforcement is not to be tolerating these type of things. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. A second police officer has been charged with the felony stemming from an alleged domestic matter. Jefferson County, Arkansas. A sheriff's Wait. deputy involved in a shooting at a bar and grill has resigned amid an internal investigation, the sheriff's office said. Can we get more information on the domestic violence one? Um, sure. We're finding a lot of these law enforcement officers are actually in relationships with attorneys and things like that, and judges that are rolling on them right now. And it's very sad to see Eve. Um, I wanted to bring up something because there was more news today on uh, Hamas, Hamas this, Hamas that. Hamas is actually traded on Don and Bradstreet, listed as Hamish Hay. 4115 Legation Street, Northwest Washington, D.C. Legation two, Street. Yep. Yeah, 20015. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and again, we have directors there uh, from the intelligence production company on the side of Moss and then on the side of uh, Mossad. And, uh, you know, they create these presentations that, uh, you know, they're, uh, you know, so that's shooting rockets over at uh, Israel, and so Israel's got to shoot rockets back over at them, or, well, no, they don't shoot over rockets, they send in their uh, big planes that uh, they get from the United States Incorporated. Mossad, Inc., you can find... Uh, at 1300 Fifth Street Northeast, Washington, D.C., 20002. It's also traded as MOSA ICA at 1029 Vermont Avenue, Northwest uh, Suite 1000, Washington, D.C., 2005. And MOSAC Insurance, 2801 New Mexico Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C., 2007. Okay, so the story in New Orleans here to see what we got here. For the second time in four days, New Orleans police officer has been charged with a felony stemming from an alleged domestic matter. WDSU I team has learned that OFC, I mean Officer Christopher Carter Sr. faces a single count of domestic abuse battery and another count of domestic abuse battery involving strangulation. He was placed on emergency suspension without pay. Charges stem from a Public Integrity Bureau investigation that began January 27th after PIB said it received a complaint. Uh, I'm sorry, PIB and let's see, Carter, 35, a 10-year veteran member of the NOPD. He is represented by an attorney with the Fraternal Order of Police. Which All is right. another ringer. A ringer. A spokesman for the Orleans Parish District Attorney's Office confirmed the charges, but did not elaborate on the nature of the crimes. The development comes on the same day that NOPD DET, our Detective Robert Hurst, appearance in court to answer a charge of attempted second-degree murder. Hurst pled not guilty, and the hearing was set for July 21st. Though details were not made available, the allegations against Hurst 
as first reported on Friday by the I team, also involved a domestic matter. Hearst was placed on emergency suspension without pay. Orleans Parish Criminal Court Judge Kiva Landrum Johnson is handling both cases. Absolutely. Look, that looks like a ringer. I think that these law enforcement officers are being rolled on. The public record is always public record. If they're hiding something, that's a reason. Um, Mossad is also with its own holding corporation called MOS, MOS Holdings Incorporated, located at 50 F Street, Northwest Suite, 1050, Washington, D.C., 20001. But these poor law enforcement officers, why isn't the public record being made public? Yeah. If there's charges and allegations against them, it should be made public. Otherwise, they're being preyed on. And, of course, the any union... For all law enforcement officers out there, as well as everybody else, citizens alike, um, any union is a CIA presentation. They're there to pretend like there's a decentralized form of government under fourth generation warfare. And if ultimately, you are going to be raised. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, let's see. Ashtabula, Ohio. Police officer was pulled over twice in one night. Under suspicion of driving under the influence before he was arrested. Sounds like they were targeting him, doesn't it? Why didn't they um, give him haul him in home. the first time? Right, or give him a ride home. Maybe one of his friends was the first guy to pull him over or something. Well, you don't know. And, and on top of that, DUI is not harm. It's a commercial crime. He's never harmed anybody yet. He just got a driving under the influence, which absolutely only provides revenue for corporate counsel. Right, but they are espousing that to be their form of government for the Atlantic Charter, so uh, can't, they can't be held accountable. I mean, they're still supporting the uh, private acts and acts of commerce, the, uh, the criminalization against the revenue absolutely. under 27 CFR 72.11, and so, I mean, but when you live by the sword, you die by the sword. I know, but then I have a different version because I have read those reports out of 1999-2000 that says the judge and attorneys are requiring low IQs. Yeah. And I am so fearful that law enforcement is, at this time, being taken advantage of because of course they, they have are. low IQs and they've been puppets for the administration for a very long time. Yep. Evansville, Indiana, a well-decorated police officer was suspended for four days because of his driving. According to police records, he has been involved in six accidents in which he was determined to be at fault. That doesn't say <laughs> I guess it's easier to get a driver's license when you're a cop. Or <laughs> right. I don't know. However, but what were the circumstances? Was he on a chase? Was something happening? Was there an Why emergency? Are, yeah, why are the, they, they always on these chases? Because they're chasing down the commercial crimes. Right, right. I like that bank robbery. You catch that uh, story about the bank robbery? Uh, uh, a mother was killed. Uh, they're, they haven't determined the other, whether it was uh, by a uh, police officer or these uh, uh, thugs, basically, for uh, gang members that held up a, uh, a bank. You know, right, and sure. they were armed to the teeth, and the cops went chasing them, and they they took hostages. One hostage died. And and most of the gang members, uh, according to Book Four of the Church Committee report, supplementary detailed staff reports on foreign military intelligence, majority of these gang members are CIA or FBI. That could be. So you don't know, and that, and that's what we're seeing a lot of in Illinois, specific to Cook County is um, females, pregnant females, uh, single females with more than three, four children that are overhead on the state are being murdered. The gang violence is just an overall claim of corporate counsel. However, gangs, in a relative sense, any kind of gang member does not have any benefit of killing a pregnant female or a single mother of four, five, six kids. Corporate counsel does. Now let that sink in. Because attorneys were doing the same thing in India, in Muslim countries, 
pitting Hindus and Muslims. I mean, the most profound thing that ever happened to me was when um, I took my advocacy over to Indian countries, um, and, and I hate using that word, Bangladesh, Pakistan, India itself. And in doing so, I was running into Hindus, Sikhs, and Muslims all together, and they didn't want to interact with each other. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I start getting wind from the Hindus, did you know that Muslim men were killing their widows, burning their widows alive after, you know, um, all of these things to prevent inheritance? Well, even in my mind, and I'm very analytical, and, and very, very analytical in thought and practicality, even in my mind, that one slipped by me for a little bit. But especially to all the listeners that just heard that. I was told that Muslim men were burning their widows alive to prevent inheritance. A widow refers to the male being dead. So it was attorneys burning these women alive and raising their estates. And we see that on a very soft cell uh, plane here, in the, or not here, I don't, I'm not located in the United States Incorporated, but we see that on a very soft cell um, playing field with uh, the 35,000 male suicides in the U.S. Inc. alone each year, 55,000 male suicides in, the, in um, India each year. Which, of course, the rates do not, they're, they're not uh, coinciding with each other. Uh, there's been a rash of, quote, suicides, male suicides since the introduction of VAWA, which is the Violence Against Women Act, and, of course, International Violence Against Women Act. But when you get down to the bottom line, you ask yourself, who benefits? And it's only corporate counsel benefiting. It's not the females, it's not the ex-wives, it's not the ex-girlfriends, it's corporate counsel that then turns around to charge an ex-girlfriend or an ex-wife, but they're the ones who were poking them into that behavior. And uh, a couple months ago I was so glad to see that uh, a court and its administration was charged in India for aiding and abetting a suicide, a male suicide, because of the fourth generation warfare employed in the court process, the family court process. And I'm hoping that we'll see more and more. Yeah, and that's, that's probably the worst uh, brunt of the war against humanity right there is the fourth generation warfare, and, and especially, particularly, you see it so much in family courts and these GLs, the Guardian Militum, have been so untouchable in the past that they can just direct all of these absurd, War ridiculous, uh, you know, intrusions upon the lives of human beings. Right. And then families. Say, right. And then say it's suicide when it's them catching in on the uh, killing of the male. Because once they remove the male, what happens? They can get at the babies. And, yeah. of course, we have numerous, numerous evidence, numerous evidence of GALs preying on children. That's their function, the guardian ad litem. And, of course, we talked to Scott K. Summers, and in his own voice, he said, yes, I have to have a diagnosis in order to discharge congressional bankruptcy. And in that, um, every time that a child is raped, that's a diagnosis. Every time that a child is molested, that's a diagnosis. And it is corporate counsel, it is the guardian ad litems, it is these co um, county conservators that are preying on children, that are preying on females, and killing males at a very swift rate. Thomas Herbs was, was murdered uh, by um, Scott Johnson, uh, Todd Johnson, sorry, up in uh, uh, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. There's tons and tons of evidence, including the, the medical examiner's report did not match the police report, including the evidence of uh, Todd Johnson coming in and taking the portion of the rope out of evidence for his own use, including the evidence that I witnessed with my own eyes when I went up there, that that child, uh, Thomas Herbs, did not hang himself. 
When he was found, the rope was straight up and down the back of his neck. And there were burn marks on the beam where he was found, his body was found, as because he was hoisted up. The body had to have been pulled with a rope. And there were pull marks, burn marks on the wood. Now these things have to be dealt with. And they have to be dealt with immediately. Our children and our males are at stake. Yeah. And this is... Uh more evidence of the genocide, obviously, and it's up to you people to uh, stand up, quit uh, being being part of that system, and hold them accountable. Um, the indictment of the evidence. Now, uh, anybody out there facing these court problems? Take the genocide document in our, our case and, and put that into their case. Or, or, or how, how would you uh, prefer they handle that, Tim? Right. Um, the genocide doc, the low intensity conflict order that was put out by the United States uh, court, um, that's the, the absolute. We were understood by the State Department. We were understood by the United States Incorporated. We were understood by various individuals and it says this in the genocide document. This needs to be first place with the sheriff. And the importance of that is if you give it to the courts first and not the sheriff first, the court is going to shut you up and it's going to shut the sheriff up. Now the sheriff does not know that he's brokering securities. The bailiff does not know that he's brokering securities. Corporate counsel knows. And they have been using the sheriff for a very long time. And to all law enforcement, the sheriff who is given the treasury, and that original constitution, the original contract with the treasury was for law enforcement. It was not for legislation. Article 1, Section 9. Clause 3, no bill of attainder, that means an appropriation bill, or ex post facto law shall be passed. Anything after this point in time. Congress was never, ever, 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 ever given authorization to legislate anything. They took up that position and you gave them the power. But the contract was with the sheriff. And it's always been with the sheriff ever since the separation of the spiritual and the temporal. And that was, of course, the proclamation by William I. Take it back. Time to take it back. If you look at the structure of what you know as government, it is a library corporation. The original library corporations had sheriff and one employee, the clerk. It didn't have 500 and some legislators. It didn't have 2,000 corporate council attorneys. It didn't have 600 and some general councils. 666, I think. Yeah. It didn't have those things. The sheriff owned everything. It was the steward of mankind. And it was there to protect the humanity from Satan, the attorney. And by the time the uh, library corporations started adapting and developing the law societies and allowing uh, the lawyers guilds is when everything went to, sorry, but everything went to hell. And these attorneys have been owning everything for a long time and they taught you that you are not the authority. And that it's so far uh, outside of the truth, it's not even funny. Yeah, they were there, uh, you know, facilitating uh, the uh, protection of humanity at, at one time, believe it or not. And that's now it's all been perverted, uh, turned around to, to protect the system that's creating these productions like we see in... Uh, 
Israel and Gaza and you know in Ukraine now um, all of them they're all the same you know and by the way that uh, is an air the air traffic controller uh, said it was the Ukrainian military who shot down the uh, MH uh, flight 17 MH 17 and then military jets were shadowing it and and, and, and the air traffic controllers then uh, they were saying that they're all taken off their duties immediately after saying that. Right. And again, the Ukraine listed on Dun & Bradstreet is called the Ukraine United States 1776 I Street Northwest Suite 575 Washington DC 20006 Ukraine United States Business Council 1701 K Street Northwest Suite 903 Washington DC 20006 and of course, and the most important, is you said Europe and Eurasia, DOS, you said 5850 Kiev Place, Washington, D.C., 20521. Air Ukraine is also located at 1620 I Street, Northwest Suite 810, Washington, D.C., 20006. And of course, you know, we've talked about this earlier in the show. Washington Moscow Business Corporation, 1800 Connecticut Avenue, Washington, D.C. Um, also, Moscow is traded as uh, Washington Moscow Exchange, located at 2001 S Street, Northwest Suite 530, Washington, D.C., 20009. And of course, the most profound. Do you want to read that? Because that one's always like something that just tears me up. American University in Moscow, 3001, Vasey Terrace, Northwest, Apartment 1022, Washington, D.C., 20008. But it says American University in Moscow. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yes, it is. And that is the show. Do you have any parting words, Paul? Oh, yeah, just uh, remember, folks, it's, uh, no matter what face they paint on it, it's Congress, UN, Congress, Ukraine government, Congress, uh, Russian Federation, Congress, uh, North Korea, Congress. I mean, so all the world's a stage, and uh, you got to quit buying all this stuff, so... That's about all I got to say, I guess. We'll try to cover some more stuff uh, uh, in the shows to come until, you know, people in law enforcement alike understand what is actually going on. Let's take us out with uh, some grim facts, Alice Cooper. <laughs>